Yo, <clears throat> what's up, guys? Let's send this in the Discord. What's up, guys? Nice to see everyone come in. Just gonna give it a couple more minutes, but today we're gonna be talking about how to buy and sell businesses, and more specifically, we're gonna be talking about how much money do you need to buy a business. You know, um, I'd love to like feel free to like message in the chat. You know, like where you're calling from, or like just say hi. You know, I'd love to see you guys, and yeah. You guys start in a couple of minutes once more people join. Um, but yeah, um, I think it like you know how much money you need to buy a business is a very difficult question to answer. Sorry, just eating an orange, you know. But hey, what's up, Johnny? But I think it's like, it's almost always the first question you have to ask yourself, you know, because um, how much money you're looking to put in is often like the main question, you know. And until not very long ago, um, you only, like, you could really only consider buying a business if you only, if you had like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, you know. And I think that's that's changed over the last couple of years, and um, it's a pretty interesting change. You know, I think it's something really new. I'm gonna share a Google Doc in the chat, so we're gonna this that we're gonna be following this doc. You know, for today's uh, today's lecture, let's say, and um, yeah, just gonna wait for a couple more people to join. Um, yeah, let me just put it in WhatsApp, uh, how do I find the link? Awesome. Got that in WhatsApp. All right, so I think this is this is a good point to start at, you know. So um, today we're going to be talking about how much money do you think, um, how much money do you need to buy a business, right? So I think first of all, I'd love to start with like if anybody like just like throw out throw in a random number in the chat, you know, um, that like you think you know would be like this much. This is how much money you think you would need to buy a business, you know. Um, so let me share my screen. Can anybody confirm that you can see my screen? Um, so yeah, what's I want to be like, how much money do you think you need? And I'd love to get, if anybody has any thoughts, I'd love to get that in the chat. I don't know if there is anybody yet. Um, okay, so so I guess I'll start with what I thought. So when I first came across Acquire, I thought that you needed at least a hundred thousand dollars. You know, like there's no way you can buy a business for less than that. You know, and um, that's why, like, when I first came across Acquire, it was just like, yeah, just like 
sort of really surprising. Sorry, Faza just sent a message and uh, that was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so it was really surprising to me that in fact, so when I actually looked at how much I bought my first business for, and it was like four thousand dollars you know so there's a huge difference between these two numbers you know and this is what i think like a lot of people don't realize is that you can buy businesses for very little money up front especially so i just bought this newsletter for a thousand dollars um it's it's this it, i can actually add the link over here so it's called daily wisdom it's like one quote every day and it has about 5000 subscribers you know i'm actually planning to give out the newsletter later um in the community that we have for the homies um and that's gonna be pretty fun but yeah i bought this business for just a thousand dollars you know so um to answer the question really it's like how much money do you need to buy a business um the answer is like not much initially you know uh, you're not gonna get like the most perfect business you know but you're definitely gonna get like a pretty decent with a couple thousand dollars you can you can go pretty far you know and especially if you like have a particular niche or type of business that you think you would be interested in um so yeah so so that was just something that i want to take you guys through um let me check if so I'll, I'll answer questions so, by the way if anybody has any questions like please feel free to add them as comments on the um let me make sure oh, oh i should make this comment though okay yeah so please feel free to like add them as comments on the google doc as we go or um yeah i'll stop if anything is relevant but yeah so not much initially you know a few thousand can go pretty far but i think generally like i like taking like 10k as a really good like 10k is a good amount you know let's say like you're a student or um you're somebody who just wants to try this out like 10k is a really good amount to start with um i think going below that is possible but then you're if you have the resources i wouldn't suggest it because then you're really looking at businesses that have more problems right and you're trying to find more of a deal um as you go above 10k um you know if you're like more comfortable with the risk or if you have more resources um around 150 to 100k i think is really interesting um so i'd say 10k is for you know student um wants to try this out um yeah low risk low effort 100k is you're like more confident you know um more time required and um you i really like this range because there's not a lot of buyers looking at this range usually people that have like 50 to 100k look at taking debt and try to buy a larger business you know, so I think there are some pretty interesting businesses that you can find here, especially if you have like technical knowledge or if you have a particular niche that you're going for. Um, yeah, but I think otherwise, generally, um, this is somebody who's like more of an experienced operator. And then, you know, maybe an add on to an existing business, you know. So if you think like you already have a business and you think that uh, there could be a, some kind of acquisition, you know, that may make sense for you, then um, yeah, that would make sense. Then then once you go above 100K, like I think it really depends if you're taking debt or not. Um, we're not going to get too much into this, but um, debt or not is like this. This is a big question, you know, and um, as you go above 100K, that's a terrible highlight yeah so as you go above 100k a lot of times debt is involved and that makes it much trickier you know um but yeah we're not gonna go too much into above 100k above a 500k in this this uh, lecture you know we're gonna keep these like 
more um, family friendly let's say so we're going to be focusing on these price ranges so before we go ahead um next i'm going to be talking about how has um okay somebody made a weird call i don't know what that was but so next we're going to be talking about how each price range has different criteria right so depending on what price range you're looking at you're going to have different criteria for the business you're looking at so over here we spoke about um who is the operator specifically you know um yeah and over here we're going to be talking about the different criteria but yeah if anybody has any questions on the just coming back to the chat so okay there are a couple of questions my bad guys okay harsh gupta said which business should we buy um hey that's what we're all here for that's what we're here to figure out you know kind of together um later i yes johnny i can um ron asked does the newsletter go out daily it does so it's a daily wisdom newsletter so yep and uh yeah so anonymous hacker asks as not a cs student what business would i recommend buying so um i'm not technical myself uh, i have a lot of material on my um nas community under the product section and resources that will help you with this and ron mentioned that whether i would recommend guided by acquire so i think that really depends on whether you think that they will help you maximize your exit but um feel free to like um drop me an email i'll put my email in the chat there feel free to drop me an email and uh, yeah happy to chat more about that um but yeah thanks for the question guys gonna go back to um yeah how uh, each price range has different criteria so um why don't we break up 1 to 10k to under $1000 first so this is like you're looking at shit businesses you know let let's not try to sugar coat it you know you don't have a lot of money you're looking at pretty terrible businesses you know but if you can find something you know so you're kind of like truffle hunting you know so if but if you can find something you can there's a lot of potential to unlock a lot of value but it's hard you know and i did get a good deal on this business with the thou so like it is $2000 but the remaining is like in payments after we make some revenue and it's just $1000 up front um but yeah then let's say you know you're looking at uh, less than 5k but so guys if you want me to like look at larger sizes you know like feel free to drop comments in the um in the chat or whatever for like whatever thoughts you have you know like you're like oh i want to look at like 500k businesses um probably won't do that over here but happy to talk more about that um so yeah under 5000 over here you have some more leeway you know so you're looking at some profit ability um maybe you're looking at about like 100 mrr you know something like that i think businesses around that range are um really interesting generally um yeah and i think i think that um yeah 100k or like 100k mrr businesses are like i think it depends on how many customers it has right uh, it could be like one customer at paying 100k 100 dollars every month or it could be 10 customers paying 10 dollars right and then then it's really nice because you can very directly see who these customers are and then you just go like okay how do we find another one of these right or how do we find 10 of these right um like how do we just just find more of this this same customer type and i think that's a really good strategy for people to run um so yeah i really like businesses in like the 100 100 mrr range and um yeah you know you're generally looking at things that are low effort and um yeah i i i like i like this range this is a good range to be at then once you come to under 10k that's when you have a bit more flexibility you know to 
sort of um, have fun with, you know, maybe go for a larger, larger business, you know, um, still at just 500 MRR. You know, 500 MRR, buying it for 10K would be hard because that's then like 6,000 ARR. But hopefully, you know, let's say, uh, let's actually change this to like under 15K. You know, so 500 MRR, um, again, you're looking at profits, um, a bit more effort, you know, ideally, you already want to have a distribution channel in place. So not only do they have a couple of customers, but they actually have like a consistent way of reaching those customers, right? So over here, you're talking about a couple of customers over here, you're talking about like they know how to reach these customers and they've done it consistently before, right? So um, you can very easily duplicate that, you know, you can understand like, oh, do I understand, do I know Instagram, you know, or it could be a community, whatever um, the distribution is coming through. Um, yeah. And that that's interesting because, uh, yeah, I think that that, especially if it's a distribution channel, you know, that like, you already have a business in that, you know, already, or you already have some sort of competitive advantage. That's when it really comes into play, you know? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, then after that, okay, I'm kind of gonna, um, scrap these. I had like, I had planned like other brackets, but I think this, this is more interesting. Um, so let's do under, I don't want to do under 25 K. So let's just do under 50 K now. Okay, so this is when you're really like going a bit bigger, you know, um, 50K, you're probably looking at like 1000 MRR, you know, something fun like that. A um, 1000 MRR means, you know, uh, it's making at least a $10,000 annual revenue, you know, so um, you have, and that's at least, you know, so it's going to be, if you're buying it for 50K, ideally it's more than that. And you, you have more more revenue to play with, right? Employees usually um, more things to be done, more risk. So I think um, once you come to these larger ranges, you do have to start um, thinking a lot more about you know how will you like what are all of the different things that this business needs, right? Because there are going to be a lot of existing um like this yeah there can be a lot of existing processes in place so this gives you a lot of info you know and um over here now you can like really start considering like what has this business been doing can i keep doing that you know um yeah will it grow and uh yeah you this is where you start getting um, like much more serious in terms of like evaluating the business, right? Because before this, like, okay, whoever's doing this, if you can not highlight, that would be great. Unless you're leaving a comment, then that's okay. But try not to do that. Um, so yeah, because before this, you're really looking at like broken businesses in a sense. Thank you, anonymous dragon. Uh, <laughs> Before this, like this is these these are really like broken businesses in a sense, you know. Um, like they may not always be broken, you know. It can also be like a perfect business making like fifty dollars a month, you know. It makes five hundred dollars in a year. It's been doing that for the last three years, but it's very difficult to scale that up, right? So you're not really like. Like we are talking about just let's let's make a lot of presumptions here, right? So this business is also difficult to scale up. So you're not really looking to grow it, right? But but with these businesses, there's there's a lot more happening, you know. You just have more information um with which you can make a decision. Um so yeah. And uh okay, let me before I go higher than this, let me see if there's any questions over here. Uh what's up guys? Nice to see there's 44 people here. Um, what's up, Javier? Nice to meet you. Um, so I'd, I'd actually, I'd actually recommend you guys to check out my NAS community. I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna send the link in the chat. Yeah. 
sorry about that i'm having my laptop is just lagging out just a little bit thank you webdev i appreciate that i try my best to have a good stream let's let's pin that um but so so check out the um nas community i just put in the chat so in that if you go to products i actually have like all of the resources that i use to buy and sell businesses all of the marketplaces i go to the newsletters i use um all that good stuff i actually have my own newsletter where i send um interesting businesses once a week um but yeah so yeah generally i really like you know this world of buying and selling businesses um overall i really like so this is to actually answer i'm i'm answering javier's question right now so he asked um where can we find businesses to buy and where can you sell them after growing them and are there any good marketplaces with enough debt depth so i'd say number one for me is acquire.com so i really really like it as a marketplace it has a lot of depth a lot of different businesses and it focuses mainly on online businesses and there's a lot of a lot it gets a lot of attention from different areas you know which i really like um besides acquire there's flipper so i do think flipper doesn't uh, have as many it it's much older than acquire it has much more stale listings you know many more listings which i'm a little bit unsure of the authenticity but it's still a good marketplace then if you want to go lower um in terms of price ranges so microns.io is a great marketplace um i'll add the link in the chat i'm a big fan of microns you know it's one of the fewer um smaller marketplaces you know so looking for businesses under 100000 um yeah so yeah and then beside microns there's stuff like borderline biz or micro startups buy sell micro startups um, there's a lot of different marketplaces but these are definitely the bigger ones you know um yeah so, so lenards in the chat talking about the business model of his hostel um but yeah let's go back to pinning web devs uh, comment i appreciate that for real and try my best out here um so yeah now when we look at businesses like uh 50k plus right so let's say like 50 to uh, uh i would want to say uh, let's just do like less than 100000 that continues with the trend so i am looking at like really interesting businesses you know i've i've seen like so we are mainly talking about saas businesses here right when we're talking about mrr um if you go to like actually you know what? let me let me let me backtrack and go through these through the lens of different types of businesses um what do you guys think do you all want to go through the lens of different types of businesses or do you all want to look at like what do people look at above 100 above 50k you know or we can look at like e-commerce businesses or shopify apps you know what do they sell for at 10k um feel free to like drop whatever you all think in the chat otherwise i'll just probably make a decision myself um but yeah what's up atni nice to see you in there man i appreciate you joining uh awesome so i i think instead i'll just uh do do what i had in mind so um when you i'll i'll just talk about e-commerce businesses in e-commerce businesses in general so when you start talking about like um so initially we were talking about saas businesses so that software as a service these that generally have high margins you know um low operating cost and doesn't require a lot of employees you know but then when you talk about e-commerce businesses they're generally like high revenue high cost of goods sold you know and um, just more 
cyclical you know uh, with SaaS you usually have recurring revenue so more predictable over here you have to like every week you have to damn you'll have to you're already seeing me with the most trashy spellings um but yeah every week you have to go out and every month you have to go out and get new customers you know which makes it much harder so um the multiples on selling is very different right so with SaaS businesses you can get from anywhere from like three to eight times um let's say three to six times profit or revenue and with like e-commerce businesses like it's much much harder you know so i've seen like e-commerce businesses not even be able to sell for one times revenue you know so under one times revenue for sure and i think like if it's like if times profit like two to three times profit can be a reasonable deal you know depending on depending on the business um but yeah besides e-commerce there's also like similar business types which is like agencies you know which are very similar to e-commerce businesses where um high revenue high cost of goods sold you know cyclical and they generally sell for around one times revenue um yeah then there's also like service based businesses so this is like web development or um yeah any different types of services i guess those are kind of agencies um but yeah so when you actually look at these these kinds of businesses with like you know focusing more on revenue then you're all of a sudden looking at like one times revenue, right? So all of a sudden you're looking at buying an e-commerce store that's made $5,000 in the last year, you know, and you're looking at buying it for like two and a half K, something like that. So yeah, there's a lot of interesting flexibility that that you get with um, with these businesses because there's a lot of deals to be made, right? So you can buy things for like one times revenue, less than one times revenue, um, you know, you can also be, you know what, actually, I wasn't planning for this to be part of the stream, but we could look at acquire and look at some businesses. If you guys want to do that, um, if you do like, please drop yes or something in the comments, that would be awesome. Um, so, oh, my stream has a two minute delay. God damn, bro. That's sad. Okay. Thanks, Leonard, for pointing that out. Oh, but then how did you how did you just hear that right now? You said yes. So it doesn't have a delay. That was that was that was bait, Leonard. Um <laughs> so yeah, to answer some more. Oh wait, uh, no, I said yes to if y'all wanna see me watch Acquire not about the two minute delay that makes sense um that's mad but anyways so i'll so i'll go on acquire but before that let me answer some questions so giants games asked how many star i bought five startups so far um all of them for less than like 20k and um yeah my next acquisition i'm trying to make it around 100k so let's see how that goes but that's an interesting username. Um, web dev asked, should starting, like starting a business is a different game, right? So we're talking about buying a business. Um, and yes, there are, I have modules on growing in my community. So you should definitely check those out. Um, yeah. Okay. So now let's look at acquire a little bit. So why don't we actually... Um, so I was having a friend look at African startups specifically. So um, let's go into acquires topics and then let's, oh, we can't filter through these. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go through businesses less than 10,000 or let's do 25,000. Okay. That is not right. $25,000. Awesome. And why don't we restrict these to e-commerce businesses specifically? Yeah. Awesome. 
So, um, yeah, I don't know if there's any interesting business that uh, stands out to you guys. Feel free to ask me to look at one of them specifically. But, yeah, looking at these businesses, you know, I think there's there's a lot of interesting ones. Like, there's this one with, like, 200K revenue, asking price 20K. I sent in an LOI, I mean, uh, um, to contact him. But let I haven't actually looked at the business a lot. Um, then there's this store, you know, that sells healing crystals and gemstones. So I know, like, it's like, a, um, it's like a, it's a market that a lot of people pay attention to. Um, it's good that they're still making revenue, but I'm really sus about the fact that like there's very little profit. 200k sales in 2022 is impressive, but you obviously want to look at how legit this is. And um, yeah, they have like two Etsy stores, a Shopify email list socials you know so it's like a pretty decent business you know and you're able to pick this up for like one times revenue four times profit is extreme like steep you know i'd say like um two to three times profit is much better you know so maybe picking this up for like 10 15k would make sense um yeah then let's see what else we have here so something else pretty interesting so a monthly subscription offering creative toys for toys for children so what i couple of things i really like about this is that it's a subscription so that means it's recurring it's very specific right it's super niche it's like it's a niche ta- like reason for a niche audience so it's like creative toys so niche like industry for children aged six to five years old you know so um that's a very specific target audience as well and um, the third biggest brand in Poland, I would definitely double check that. I don't know about, um, yeah, I don't know how they have 30 loyal customers with being the third biggest brand. I guess for toys monthly subscriptions, which is probably not a very big market in Poland. Um, but yeah, apparently you can buy the third biggest brand in Poland for toys monthly subscriptions on acquire.com for $25,000. That sounds like a deal to me, but you obviously need to check much more into this. So, okay, the fact that this is powered by Chart Mogul and has pretty, pretty interesting revenue, growing really well, um, making like consistent revenue a month. I honestly quite like this business. Um, I may take a look at it later. It's it's good that they. Don't offer access immediately because that means that they're being careful. Um, but yeah. So let's actually look at something. Why don't we reduce this, right? So we're trying to look at different price ranges. So why don't we now go for less than 5,000? How many people do we still have on the stream? Yeah, Leonard with a great question. How many brands for toy subscriptions? Not that many for sure. Um, yeah. And yeah, so now looking at less than 5,000. Um, okay, that's been unlisted. So let's see. This has 15K in revenue. You obviously want to look more into that, but looks like it's pretty decent. You know, maybe bringing in $500 in revenue. 150 in profit, 5,000 in asking price. You know, I think this this has a lot of potential for sure. A variety of bandanas and accessories for dogs. Um, this is pretty interesting. Um, like pets are a really good niche because like people really care about their pets. You know, this is clearly bringing in a decent amount of revenue. You know, so there's there's a lot of revenue you have to play with, especially if you can figure out ways to like increase the margins, things like that. Um, another pet portrait thing. So who knows? Maybe there's like some kind of like maybe you take like 20, 30 K and buy like different pet related e-commerce businesses and do some kind of roll up over there. That that would be pretty interesting. But yeah, this this also is getting like Decent amount of traffic, you know, it looks like it's just picked up in terms of traffic. <coughs> and yeah, I could I could totally see um potential in this one. Honestly, I'm gonna <laughs> request access to this one as well. 
add it to a list. And yeah, another sort of dropshipping business, um, outdoor niche offering trendy casual fashion. Again, I quite like this. It's super specific, you know, it's a line of casual trucker hats and um, themed around the concept of country clubs. So it's like, it's a richer niche, you know, um, customers who enjoy an active and leisurely lifestyle. Like I, I really like, like these kind of specific sort of businesses, you know, where they're really targeting a very specific type of customer and you can clearly buy it for pretty cheap, you know, and they've already done a lot of the branding, a lot of what you need to do, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, I have, I've bought one of these projectors. Um, I find them really, I, I, I really enjoyed my projector, honestly. Like it's, it's, yeah. So it's like, it like projects like the galaxy in your room and it's usually like 20, 30 bucks on Amazon. There's a lot of different sellers, but I do think that there is potential, you know? So the conversion rate from cold ads is above 3%, which is really high for cold ads. That's very interesting, you know? And uh, so they're mainly spelling, selling on Canada and Australia, which is also interesting. Um, but yeah, you know, making it clearly making a decent amount of revenue. And um, yeah, so fifty dollars um, a projector is a pretty good price. So you have sixty percent margin, so you have a decent amount of stuff to play with. Um, the, you're probably spending a lot on ads as well, so that's why the take home isn't much. But yeah, I I quite like this business honestly. Uh, probably add this one to like my e-commerce list as well. So I have like all these different lists, you know, that I look at. Um, but yeah, let's see. Let's do one last business, uh, less than 10K. Uh, let's do maybe one last business less than uh, 10K. And then uh, we just do like some Q&A, you know. And uh, yeah. Okay, so let's actually do... So with 10K, let's do a minimum of $100 in profit. Um, at least six months old. So I'm, I'm like trying to show you guys some filters that I often use to help you like find, to like just, just go through acquire and these different marketplaces more efficiently, you know? So what I've done is less than $10,000 newest sort by newest um at least a hundred dollars in profit at least six months old and over a thousand customers um yeah so thousand plus customers so let's apply those and yeah all of a sudden you know we went from like so many businesses to four businesses right that are um that that match up particular sort of wants right the, the kinds of businesses that we would like to see so yeah interesting okay it looks like this business archived me for some reason i don't know why sometimes i sellers get offended by me but yeah so this business is interesting um you know eighteen thousand dollars in revenue 5k asking price um clearly the seller is desperate you know so you're trying to get some kind of deal so you do have to be um you do have to be careful you know you don't want to just um yeah pick up something you know because it looks like a good deal and then realize you picked up like just a terrible business you know that's actually worth nothing um another you know interesting like sneaker store uh we are looking for less than ten thousand dollars you know so we're not gonna find some sort of crazy business here but the, these are these are interesting or uh, maybe that sneaker business not as much this 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 streetwear brand is interesting you know like eighteen thousand in revenue five thousand asking price is a interesting opportunity and okay online store that provides removable wallpaper for diy that's so interesting that's so random and really good revenue numbers healthy profit 
more than 50% margins. Um, this is very interesting. This is very interesting. I'd love to know what you guys think about this business. Because it's a $10,000 asking price. It's founded in March 2020. So it's been around for a while. Um, and it's so niche. Durable, washable, removable, self-installation wallpaper. Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. So I really like how niche it is because if you don't know that it's a thing, there's not likely to be a lot of competitors out there, you know, and a lot of people are probably don't know that it's a thing. Right? So yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, it looks like they're making like a decent amount of revenue. The only thing I'd be unsure of is like how are they making this revenue, right? How, where are these users coming from? How much are they paying? You know, what is the average order value? How much are you spending to get these users? You know, um, what are the competitors like? Where else would they go? You know, um, why are they choosing your, your solution over others? Is it because they don't know about others? Is it because yours is better for some reason? You know, so definitely a lot of due diligence that's required, but still quite interesting. Um, so yeah, uh, I'd say that's that's like a good 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 little session for uh, for today. I'm just gonna come back to this slide for you guys. So yeah, that that's sort of uh, uh, what we got for you all today. What I really want to do now is I want to answer some questions. So you know, just do some Q and A. Um, yeah, sort of see. See what some people have in mind. So I'm going to answer some uh, recent questions because they're more relevant to the business we just looked at. And they're going to take questions generally. So Lena asked, like, yeah, we definitely do want to see their current advertising efforts. You know, looks like they're, they're doing paid ads and they're getting money. So, yeah. You know, you definitely want to look much deeper into that. But unfortunately, we don't have... Um, sorry, a yawn came on me. We don't have access right now. And um, yeah, I can't show that on stream because Acquire has like this NDA stuff. Um, but yeah. So for e-commerce businesses, so you're buying the business, right? So you do have to take over things. You have to run it. You have to be committed to running it. Um, but it's there are generally a lot of processes already in place that you can take over, right? And most e-commerce businesses run on drop shipping. Right. So you don't actually hand, have to handle any of the product. You just handle marketing and getting in touch with them. Right. So for the people that can't see on the stream, we're running through some questions right now. Um, so this was. So sh cheeky shout out to Leonard and um, uh, acquire Discord bot that we're going to have running soon in our community. Um so yeah, Giants game with another question. So how many startups have I bought? I think I answered this, but um, so I've bought five startups so far. All of them for um, each deal was for less than twenty thousand dollars, but total more than that and like whatever. Um, but each single one was for less than twenty k, and I've bought a lot of different kinds of businesses, but um, mainly micro SaaS businesses. And recently, I've started picking up different newsletters. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Feel free to drop any more questions if you have any. Um, so, Pulkit asks, what are my thoughts on buying service businesses slash agencies? So, I think, first of all, there's always going to be a massive asterisk next to these types of businesses. It's like, what are the current operations looking like? Right? How are they finding customers? How long are these customers going to stay with them? Right? Are they going to be with them for like three to five years? You know, like, or is it just a couple of months thing? How sticky is that? Right? So I think it really depends a lot on the business. But if you can buy a business that has potential, you know, that has customers sticking around and that you think you can grow, then I think that it definitely makes a lot of sense. Right? And then there's, of course, like, question marks on you as an operator right whether 
you are the right person for this kind of service or business you know and whether um yeah just whether you you if it's like a, dev- a software development agency you know can you run that if it's a marketing agency can you run that right it's not just always about the numbers but it's about like the underlying skills that are required um so yeah uh any other questions that i see so yeah thoughts on buying a ai saas business was an e-commerce business so i bought a couple of ai saas businesses i think i prefer that much more compared to e-commerce um because it's my main goal is to sell it eventually right i think e-commerce businesses are very difficult to sell um so that's me personally right because like the exit is the main goal at the end of the day and e-commerce businesses are much harder saas businesses is where you get that like much higher multiple you know um but yeah i think also depends on what you think you can do well so um giants games with another question so um i am an international student here in the us right now so um any kind of fund legal structures around that are difficult for me to think of um on the visa that i'm on right now what i am doing is buying businesses and i've started sort of conversations with people especially people who are based in the us um who can help me out with like the legal side of things to help sponsor larger acquisitions also like help putting operators in place just doing a lot of different things you know um this stream is really just like the front facing for for a lot of things happening on the back end you know and like um yeah so so yeah i, I don't know if i answered your question specifically but um yeah feel free to like shoot me a message or an or an email um bulkit with another question about partners um so i i think that depends a lot um the issue is never actually a money i think capital is fairly easily accessible i think it's about the right capital at the right terms right and i think that like what a lot of people who are willing to give capital are looking for is just like not have to think about it you know and just let 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 somebody else work on it i don't think that's an approach that i would want to take i would want somebody who's just genuinely interested by what we're doing you know committed to sort of help me scale this and like also somebody who i can learn from right so um yeah that that's what i would say over there and javier with a great question thank you so much for like a really good question javier so what are my top 3 recommendations for a spot on due diligence in a business so i think the best way to do that is let's just do that with like this business itself right so i quite like this business so let's look at red flags right so first of all due diligence is all about looking for red flags right so you want to understand like what are these red flags over here right so first of all we're talking about 17000 net profits and so first of all e immediately says this is overstated right why right like w- what is the understanding of like why this is overstated you know so i think like there's a lot of like these due diligence checklists out there like um i don't even have three pointers for you i just have one for you it's like sniff out the red flags you know you're looking for the problems you're not trying to like check things off a checklist you know you're really trying to understand like get into the weeds of the business and understand what makes it tick you know so looks like there's some more overhead associated with this business or purchase the product at wholesale so i'm curious you know what why if you're purchasing it at wholesale it will reduce the margins shouldn't that increase the margins you know so once you actually start looking at it and it's just about questioning everything you know so um yeah actually i can summarize you know i have two two bullet points for you mainly so number one is look for the problems right and number two is ask hard questions on each um para you know so look for the problems ask hard questions on each para you know because on each paragraph you get to like you just ask yourself like what is the question that i would ask about this 
you know, then when we go down, like, it's again very similar. So um, don't want to get again too much into it. But still, there's so many unknowns over here, right? So there's a lot of due diligence that's left to be done. Um, yeah. And then over here again, like who are the customers, you know, there's generally um, like all businesses can be like boiled down to some kinds of inputs and outputs, you know. So once you can really like get a good overview of these inputs and outputs, that's when you can start like breaking down the business and understanding it from like a first principles basis. You know, I, I think I really like um, the first principles approach of things. And um, yeah. Yeah, dude, I hope that 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 answers the question. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's um, it. If we don't have any other questions, you know, we're coming up to 50 minutes now on the live. I really appreciate everybody who's joined us. Um, oh, we, we do have a question over here. So, okay, Harsh said how, how to, where to find a business. So there's a lot of different marketplaces. One that I just showed you was acquire.com. Um, it's my favorite marketplace. I spend a lot of time on it. There's also microns.io, flippa.com, um, and then other ones which I think are not as quality but still interesting are Borderline Biz and, um, yeah, a couple of different ones. But, yeah, guys, I, I really hope that was helpful. You know, I hope it, it like, gave you some value. And, um, yeah, I did enjoy doing this as well. And, um I'm going to drop some links to like the Discord community in the chat. And uh, let's see. Yeah, just 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 hop in the Discord, you know, like come say hi to me on Twitter or YouTube or whatever it is, you know. I, I quite enjoy buying and selling businesses in general. But yeah, hop in the Discord, hop in the homies community. We generally just talk about buying and selling businesses over there. And... Oh no, Terrell, you hopped on at the end. It's okay, bro. And sorry I missed your message, dude. I just saw it. I messaged you, I think yesterday or day before or something. But um, yeah. If you have any questions, we can keep this going. But if not, unfortunately, I do have... Yeah, bro, I appreciate you too, Giant Games. Um, feel free to like email me. I'm going to drop my email in the chat as well. And yeah, happy to talk about this more as we go. And yeah, all right. Could end it in like a minute or so. I appreciate you guys. I really hope you all enjoyed this, honestly. Feel free to join, hop in the Discord and like come say hi and stuff. And yeah, all right. See you guys.